One of the lessons you learn from practicing concentration is how powerful your perceptions can be. The way you perceive the breath has a huge impact on what it feels like to breathe and your ability to settle down with the breath. If you feel that you have to fight for your breath, and that is only a small little channel by which the breath can come in and out of the body, it's going to be hard to be aware of the breath and the whole body. It's going to be hard to spread your awareness around with a sense of ease and well-being, with a sense that everything is connected. But if you think of the breath as energy, and the energy flows through the entire nervous system, that makes it easier to be with the breath, adjust the breath in the different parts of the body. This perception gives you a, a real, really useful tool for getting the mind to settle down with that sense of centered but broad awareness that the Buddha identifies as right concentration. The word perception here, sanya, means perceiving something as something. This is one of the disadvantages of the word in English, because on the one hand we can say you have your range of perception and it can mean your ability to just pick up data from all around through your senses, but it can also mean, and this is what the Buddha means by sanya, your ability to perceive something as something. You have a symbol, a word, a picture a sign, a label for what's going on and what you experience in life. Without these labels, we couldn't function. We could experience things, but we wouldn't be able to handle them properly. We wouldn't be able to get around in the world. I mean, our first perception is what's food and what's not food. And that's an important perception that helps prevent us from trying to eat things that are going to be bad for us. And as we grow up, we extend our repertoire of perceptions. Language, is, every, every word in the language is a perception, a label you put on something. And then on top of that, we have our mental images, the pictures we have in, in mind, and that we apply to things around us. And because perception does play a role in dependent co-arising, it means if you do it with ignorance, it's going to cause suffering. If you learn how to do it with knowledge, you can avoid suffering. You can actually use perception as part of the path, as when you're getting the mind in the right concentration. But you want to look carefully at how you do this and how you use your perceptions as you go through life. Some people say, well, perceptions are arbitrary. When you put your perceptions together to figure things out, you're creating a map, and every map distorts things. Well, some maps distort more than other maps, and some maps are useful all around. I was talking to someone in New York this last this spring, and he was saying, well, there is no right description of reality, and that means there is no right interpretation of the Dharma, because every interpretation is a map, and all maps distort. Well, think about the maps that they have on the, the doors of hotel rooms that tell you where the exit is. It may distort the building, but it gives you precisely the information you need. And the fact that it's unclouded makes it more and more useful. And that's what the Dharma is. It's a map. But the map is to release, and it has all the essential features, and it cuts away, cuts away unessential information. I mean, if, if those fire escape routes the fire escape maps had all the architectural details of the building and told you what color the hallway was and what color all the rooms were and filled you in with all the details about the hotel. They'd be useless maps. When a fire comes, you want something to give you just enough information to get to safety. And that's what the Dharma does. The problem is that your maps of what you're doing while you're here. To what extent do they really correspond to the Buddha's map? And to what extent are other issues or other agendas getting in the way? And the question we have you ask when you're dealing with sensory restraint, who's doing the looking, who's doing the listening, that same applies here. 
who's doing the labeling? Because these signs and images that we have in mind, they're there to serve a purpose. They point to something, but they also point back to the original motivation. What's the desire behind this? They serve our senses of becoming. That world that we see around us, that we're perceiving around us, and our sense of who we are. It's based around a desire, but it's built out of perceptions. And the desire warps the perceptions in its direction. And so even though every perception is not a totally accurate representation of what's out there, the question is, what purpose do they serve? And do they serve a good purpose? So as you go through life, you want to notice how your perceptions are actually causing trouble for you, and what ways you can replace them with better perceptions. The Buddha lists four specific ways in which we tend to really skew our perceptions, seeing constancy and things that are inconstant, seeing pleasure and things that are stressful, seeing self and things that are not self, and seeing beauty and things that are not beautiful at all. Now, the reason we do, we do this is because we have desires around those things that we want to perceive as beautiful or constant or whatever. But then as you follow those perceptions, where do they lead you? Do they produce the happiness that you want? Do they actually get in the way? Because some perceptions may be relatively accurate for one purpose, but for the purpose of freeing the mind, they may be total distortions. So you've got to check. When you perceive things in this way, where do, the, where do those perceptions lead you? And who are you listening to when you listen to the voice that says, well, this must be that, and that's, that must be this, or this is beautiful, or this is, this is me, this is mine. This is good, this is bad. Okay, good or bad for what purpose? Me or mine for what purpose? I mean, there is a sense of self that you need on the path. The self that wants to find freedom, the self that wants to have enough self-confidence that you can actually take on the path. But there are a lot of other selves that we have in our stable of selves that are, are really useless. Similarly with the world. There are lots of worlds out there that we can get involved with. But that's just it. We get involved and they don't let us out. The Dharma is a world, or the state of mind and concentration is a world that actually has an exit. It's the hallway to the exit to freedom. So as you get more sensitive to how the mind labels things, and you can see it more clearly the more still the mind is, try to apply that sensitivity to the way you perceive things around you, the way you perceive the people around you, the way you perceive the situations around you. Realizing that you do have choices in how you apply your perceptions, and that the perceptions have implications. They're connected to certain desires, and they lead to certain ends. And you may be holding on to an old, old set of perceptions that may have been useful for something you wanted when you were young. But it's not getting in the way of finding a deeper happiness, a truer happiness. Because the happiness that's promised by the Buddha is something that actually lies beyond perception. We use the perceptions of inconstancy, stress, not self, of seeing what is ugly and what we tend to view as beautiful, i.e. the human body. So we can loosen up our attachments to a lot of the old unskillful perceptions, and then we let those more skillful perceptions aside fall away as well. But don't drop them until they've done their work. So if you're having a problem with lust, we'll learn how to look at your own body as unattractive and look at the bodies so that other people around you as unattractive. Apply that perception. When you find yourself identifying with unskillful ways of behavior, Teach yourself some new skills and then identify yourself around those new skills. 
the skills of being a meditator, the skills of being someone who's generous, someone who's, who's patient, someone who's wise. We have these choices. The part of the mind that keeps saying, well, I'm, this is the way I am and this is the way I have been all along, so you just kind of have to put up with the way I am. That's the, that's the voice that's keeping you off the path. You can learn some new skills and develop a new identity around those skills. Just don't let your old perceptions get in the way. <laughs>